Insulin resistance can be measured. However, the gold standard method is invasive, expensive, and simply not practical in a clinical setting. So how do you know if your efforts toward better health are paying off and making your body more insulin sensitive? This video shares a test and observable signs that you are overcoming insulin resistance. The gold standard for measuring insulin sensitivity, referred to as hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp, is not practical outside of the research lab. However, there is a surrogate index that is often used to estimate insulin resistance that is accessible to you. That index is referred to as HOMA-IR. To utilize it, you'll need to ask your doctor for two blood tests, fasting glucose and fasting insulin. You can then take those values and plug them into an online calculator like the one found on the blood codes website to gain insights into the extent of insulin resistance in your body. While this calculation is not meant to be a definitive diagnosis, you can determine your HOMA IR score now to form a baseline. You can then monitor where your results fall over time with the goal being to move from a high level of insulin resistance into the healthy range. HOMA IR estimates insulin resistance based on your blood glucose and insulin levels. It requires a visit to your doctor's office because there is no way to test insulin at home. However, there are at-home ways to monitor your blood glucose or blood sugar. And because a primary function of insulin is to move blood sugar, how much sugar you have at a given moment is a good indicator of your blood insulin level. Testing can be accomplished with a blood glucose monitor that you pick up from your local pharmacy. The monitor analyzes a drop of blood obtained from your fingertip to calculate your blood glucose level. And this is sufficient for learning where your blood glucose is at that moment. However, to evaluate insulin resistance, you want to know what is happening throughout the day. That makes a glucometer impractical because you would need many finger pricks and you wouldn't know what is happening as you slept. A CGM or continuous glucose monitor makes it possible to monitor glucose levels 24 hours a day. CGMs have not always been available to the general public, but they are now thanks to our video sponsor Levels. I have one on right now that I put on a week ago using this small applicator. There's very little discomfort in applying it and most of the time I forget it's there, yet it continually sends my glucose level to my phone throughout the day and night. If you are not regulating your blood sugar and therefore insulin levels sufficiently, you'll see a timeline that is all over the place with large peaks and valleys. And if that's what you see when you first put on your CGM, that is okay. It's where you are at and it gives you something to aim for. What you want to see is a stable level with little variability or fluctuation of your glucose throughout the day. Here's an example from my CGM. Notice that a stable blood sugar doesn't mean a straight line. Your blood sugar will constantly rise and fall based on your activity, the food you eat, and the fact that insulin pulses out of your pancreas. It doesn't flow out in a steady stream. And I point that out because I understand that getting this data can be confusing. A nice thing about levels is that they simplify the data so you can easily tell when you're improving. You see this with their stability score, which is like getting a grade for the day. From my graph, you can see that I scored a 92, which is good, but I could still improve. Levels stability score ranges from 60 to 100. And here again, where you start is your baseline. Once you know that, you can control lifestyle factors and see real-time effects of your efforts, aiming to keep your score high day over day. The more high scoring days you can string together, the more blood sugar stability you have making insulin's job easier. If you're interested in using a CGM to monitor your blood sugar, you can use my link, levels.link forward slash Dr. Becky to get an additional two free months of their annual membership. Insulin resistance is a condition going on inside of you. However, signs of it can be noticed on your skin in two ways, either as dark patches or skin tags. Now these skin changes will not be seen in everyone with insulin resistance and there can be other causes. However, if you have them, successfully treating the underlying cause and therefore becoming more insulin sensitive will allow them to fade or even disappear. 
The brown to black patches called acanthosis nigricans most commonly appear in the armpits or the back and sides of the neck. However, they can also occur in other skin folds like the elbows, groin, knees, and areas around your belly button. Skin tags are small benign skin growths that pop up commonly in the armpits, neck, and groin, but they can develop on the trunk of your body or your eyelids. Why they develop so often on the skin of those with insulin resistance is debated. However, scientists speculate that because insulin is a growth promoting hormone, the sustained high insulin levels that result from the condition may be responsible for the development of these growths that we call skin tags. Therefore, when you get insulin under control, it makes sense that skin tags will decrease or disappear. And many of you have shared this experience. Feel free to comment if you have noticed the disappearance of skin tags since changing your diet. Being overweight and having a large waist circumference is a risk factor for insulin resistance. This belly fat is referred to as visceral fat, and when you have too much, it creates inflammation that drives insulin resistance. Therefore, reducing your waist circumference acts as an indicator that you're overcoming the condition. So how much belly fat is too much? That is typically defined as more than 40 inches for men and more than 35 inches for women. If your measurements are currently above those marks, bring them down and you will improve your metabolic health and move away from insulin resistance. Before leaving this video, I wanna to touch on lifestyle actions you can take to overcome insulin resistance. I have many videos on this topic and I will share a link to one of those videos in the description area. For now, let me give you the cliff notes to get you started. Number one, don't drink carbs. This includes soda, energy drinks, sweet tea, and fruit juice. These drinks contain nothing to slow the absorption of the sugars leading to steep blood sugar and insulin spikes. Number two, Say no to sugar and stay low with starch. Dessert, bread, cereal, potatoes, and pasta. Like the drinks I just mentioned, these foods digest too quickly for good metabolic health. Number three, eat, stop, eat. Frequent meals, especially those with refined carbs, keep blood sugar and insulin elevated. Instead, eat low carb, healthy fat meals that are substantial enough to carry you through to your next meal. Number four, Stop eating three hours before bed. Putting your digestive system to rest before you go to bed frees insulin from having to work overnight and you benefit from improved insulin sensitivity and fat loss. And number five, move more. Regular exercise makes it easier for your cells to take in glucose, reversing the resistance they once had and any form from walking to high intensity training will help. When you overcome insulin resistance, you will notice additional changes such as fewer cravings and more energy. And while these are wonderful to experience, they are subjective changes and therefore hard to quantify. In this video, I focused on objective signs, namely looking for skin improvements, including fading dark spots and fewer skin tags. Measuring your waist circumference and bringing it under the danger zone is another sign you're moving in the right direction. With the help of a blood draw from your doctor, you can check your HOMA IR result now and compare it to the result you get after making diet and exercise changes. And with levels, you can continually monitor your blood sugar using a CGM, working to minimize the dips and peaks throughout the day. If you're interested in using a CGM to monitor your blood sugar, you can use my link levels dot link forward slash Dr. Becky to get an additional two free months on your annual membership. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with your community. If you found it helpful, give it a like and subscribe before you go. Have a great rest of your day.